Hey, hey boys, question of the year. How much power can a fifth gen handle? So we know that the engine, okay. Oh, I have a car in here and someone went through my whole car, readjusted everything. I thought that was bogus. So now I lock my stuff in here, which you gotta do what you gotta do. So my boys watching, don't look. <laughs> That's right. That's where I just keep it. Just, you know, for those new guys around here, so they ain't going through my stuff. 64, those back back doors are open. People walk back and forth. Anyways, boys, uh, we know that this engine could do some some damage. We, we've seen the numbers as far as comparisons to bolts, you know, the pistons the rods everything's is beefier forged and much stronger on paper now we all know that the you could have the strongest chain but it's always the weakest link that just separates the chain right and grenades everything up so the first thing that comes up is the cp4 shoot it's dark in here the cp4 is the first thing that comes up and um yeah hopefully it's not hopefully they didn't just leave it alone I'm really hoping they improved it. Not only gave it a label 4.2, but actually did some extensive research. And Bosch is a good company. I don't know what happened on the first CP4s, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for the 4.2s. Anyway, so that being said, uh, the head is different material. We know that stronger material. Uh, a lot, a lot of changes. A lot of positive changes. You know, the they've been singing and raving about this CGI block. You know gets rid of heat a lot quicker i mean with that the combination of a lot of things i could tell on the numbers well when the truck's running and pulling it, it recovers pretty darn quick so the platform is there as far as the engine but how much can the supporting mods if we could call them that handle so without jumping the gun and be throwing numbers out there i will talk about what i think it would take to get to my number okay I have a number in mind, so here, let's let's pop the lid, I'll show you guys. I have a number in mind, which really made me happy. I took about 20 months of my time a couple days ago, and, and was under and on top of this thing, and all over it, under the hood, trying to... Ram, seriously? You gypped of a, of a light. A Ford Gen has a light, and this thing doesn't have a light? Dude, this is bogus. Ram, why would you do that? There's no light. There's no working light under here. I know it was very useful, quote unquote, but you know, look at that brand new truck and it's already failing us. But anyway, so, um, let me put you on pause. Maybe I can get the flash on this thing on. going. All right, as good as it gets. I, I was not able to turn on the flash on the thing, but I turned up the light on the camera, so whatever. So that's the heart, that's the platform and it could, it's built for well more than 400 horse. We can get that out of the way. According to the paper numbers and, and, and what the engineers were talking about, th this engine can handle a lot more. We get that out of the way. So the question is, how much more can it handle? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So a uh, diesel engine, what does it need? Air in, air out, and some fuel. So as far as air in, I've mentioned this, this intake box is a joke, Ram. I don't know why you did it, but um, you guys got the tubing down. And you got this fresh air, cold air supply, no, no bash there, but this is a freaking joke. Uh, you guys have shoved in a Ford Gen. This, this box, I mean, they give you a little bit more air, but the bottom line has to go through that filter. And the Ford Gen, I was a little cringing about the Ford Gen. You guys ramp. Oh, Cummins, one of you two. Put a bigger turbo. I mean, it's it, essentially it's the same turbo, but you guys put a bigger... Uh, Turbine, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, it, it pushes more volume. Okay, if you got push more, if you're gonna push more volume there, that volume's coming through here. So why not give us a bigger filter? So at 8,000 miles, when I did my second oil change, um, personal preference, nothing scientific about it, just personal preference. My guy got curious and he pulled off the filter. He's like, I wonder what kind of filter. And I never thought that they would use the same filter. And sure as heck, you know, we got a bunch of Ford Gen new brand new filters sitting there on the shelf and 
pulled on the one and he's like, oh, it looks like a forge in. Slapped a new forge in and put this thing back on. At 8,000 miles, that filter was filthy. Guys, keep in mind, this truck is a is on the road truck. It doesn't get off, you know what I mean, off road or any nonsense like that. But 8,000 miles being on the road, it was fairly clogged. I'll tell everyone between eight and 10, do your filters because those turbos push some volume. Yeah, maybe you might not see the PSI. PSI isn't everything. It's something, but it's not everything. These turbos push more volume. Therefore, more air goes through here. So with that, you need more filtration surface. So the biggest thing, one, one of the first things I'm gonna address getting to my number is getting more filter surface. So I think the SMB, I did the math, it's about 3.5 time, times the filtration surface of the stock one. So at once we could get 3.5 times more air through that filter. So this box is just gonna have to get swapped out if I can and just leave everything else stock. I think it'll do the job. Yes, they did pull out the foam tubing in there. So once we get the air in, uh, to my surprise, they did not Jewish, <laughs> Jewish, <laughs> jip us with the, with, the, with the piping. On the Ford Gen, the pipe that comes, you know, you get your air compressor and it shoots it out towards the intercooler, right? They jewed us right here and they uh, squished the piping. I get it. It's fitment and, and, and it needed to fit through there. I get that, but come on, come up with something and give us the whole uh, pipe. That was a concern of mine with Ford Gens. And of course, it gives the aftermarket guys something to do, but nevertheless, on the fifth gen, they does not short us anyway. So I'm happy to say that this piping is all one good old piece. It looks a little bit bigger in diameter. It goes through the intercooler. I got a lot of good things to say about the intercooler. And then the, the pipe that comes up is hard plastic. At first glance, it's a concern, but you know, I think it'll do perfectly fine. Uh, and if, it, if it's aluminum, it has a plastic covering to it, but tapping on it, it really sounds like plastic. I haven't pulled anything apart to check out, but Back to this intercooler, you guys realize you get all the flow in, the, that turbo heats up that air, jams it together, and when it's jamming it together, it's heating it up. You got a really nice intercooler. I'd say this intercooler is probably two times the size of the four gens. I'm really excited about this intercooler. So, to finish off what I'm saying here, with a little bit improvement on the air in, and obviously, obviously, just a piece of pipe out, so straight shot out on the turbo, the exit side, so we got that out of the way. Um... And, you know, half of this mess up here needs to be gone as well, so it's not heating anything up. And uh, when we come back around, the tubing up until here is fine. That horn really limits things, so I, won't, I would want to see uh, a basic horn like I had on my 4th Gen Limited, or I would want to do a mega horn. Banks Power makes a really nice horn. And I like the thing with Banks is they really test and tune their stuff, and they test them, you know. They'll give you CFN numbers if it comes to that. They'll give you PSI and volume, and I like Banks. Solid guy. Props to you. By the way, Gail, please do something here, man. Come up with something genius. Anyway, so I would change out the horn, and at that, guys, at that, I feel comfortable at 600 horse. That's my number. My number is 600 horse. So to recap real quick, changing out this, keeping, I'm fine with keeping this. If I have to do something here, it's fine. Most importantly, changing out this box so I could put a bigger filter. That's it, that's all I'm after. So it could pull in more air. Um, and then obviously, straight pipe out. Oh, muffler if you want it, but it has to be a straight shot out. You get, you see what I'm applying here, and half this mess needs to be gone. Um, the intercooler's there for 600 horse, in my opinion. And this ram needs to be changed out. If you don't want to touch the ram, at least that's what I told myself, 500 horse all day going off of paper what i know about this engine okay keeping my fingers crossed that bosch learned their cp4 stuff kinks crap out of the way got that out of the way and um, 500 horse all the way with this with the mega horn i mean paul why because i mean that really looks restrictive i might be down in a little too side too 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 hard maybe let's say four uh 540 550 but not 600 with this horn. I, I would want to see. Um, I would want to see a good, good flowing horn in there for my 600. No, that's not towing. I can't say towing. I'm just saying around town, putting along. Maybe a really small trailer, nothing big, but definitely not a gooseneck hauling loads at 600. Super excited about guys, man. Once I realized and looked over a few things, I was really, <laughs> I was really excited, man. I talked to you guys. Definitely working on some stuff here. Um, I just don't know how quick we could get the. 
Your brain's fixed up. Let's just keep it at that. The truck's brain's fixed up. Y'all might vote that I need my brain's fixed up. But anyways, let's just focus on the truck for now. Anyways, with the Ison, we all know that you can't tune the Ford Gen Isons. These Isons lock up beautifully. I'll do a video how, how it locks up. I think a lot of you guys will appreciate it. But without the tow haul on, it just locks the gears, locks, locks. So I think that'll preserve it, but we don't know. No one's really tested these trannies, you know what I mean? As I said, it's the weakest link that always grenades things up for us. But anyways, guys. As always, may the Lord bless you and may y'all have a mighty fine day and pizza's here. I gotta go enjoy.